Hi everyone, this is John from Motionworks, back with another After Effects Effects A to Z tip. In this tip, we're going to be taking a quick look at the brush strokes effect. Now you can apply brush strokes by choosing Effect Stylize Brush Strokes right here at the top. This gives you that sort of artistic oil painting look. And the settings are pretty straightforward. You have a stroke angle, brush size, a stroke length, stroke density, stroke randomness, and also a paint surface pop-up menu where you can choose to paint on the original image which is the default. You can paint on transparent which will give you a transparent background or you can choose on white or on black. Let's just reset that. I have to say that I don't use this effect that much but playing around with it for this presentation gave me a couple of other ideas of how possibly I can use it and you guys could use it too. I mean the artistic sort of look is it has its moments, it has its place but uh, I have to say I don't find those places very often in the work that I do. But check this out. You can use the blend with original property and if I just increase that to say 50, see how I can blend the strokes with the original image? And that gives me more of a grungy kind of look which isn't too bad. Kind of nice. You could also of course leave that at zero and duplicate the layer, delete the effect from the layer below and use blend modes. I'll just cycle through those blend modes by pressing shift plus on the keyboard. That's a pretty nice look isn't it? Looks like it's been chipped on the edges there. That's not too bad either. So blend with original is good, but duplicating the layer and combining it with the original can look terrific as well. You could also do that another way. If I just delete that, you can use CC Composite. And you can choose a mode from Composite Original. If I just leave it at in front and change the opacity, now I'm mixing the brush strokes effect with another version of that layer. So CC Composite's great because it means I don't have to duplicate the layer and get too many layers in my layer stack. And of course I can choose different blend modes. Okay, so that's a different effect. We'll look at that effect another time when we get up to our C's. For now let me just show you a couple of other ways that I've used this Delete this guy. Look at this one. It looks like scan lines. And to create this particular look, what I did was I used a really small brush size and I set the stroke angle at 90 degrees. And also increased the stroke length, made that really high. And that's given that a pretty nice looking scan line look that actually is a little more interesting than just using, say, Venetian blinds for this kind of look. Watch also what happens if I duplicate this layer and it's already set to the lighten mode. Let's just remove the effect from the layer below. Take a look at that. By using lighten and combining that with a version of the layer without the effect, it gives you some really interesting artifacting. Not bad at all. And of course you could have used CC Composite to do that. Let's just take this layer down to the bottom. I'm going to just make it normal and look at the next layer. This one here is very similar to the previous one but I've just changed the angle. Another nice sort of interesting TV style distortion effect and mixed with the other layer gives you quite an interesting look. Another one here. Take a look at that. Now that is pretty cool. You can actually make a grid of dots with this effect and I didn't realize that until just a few minutes ago. 
If I just increase the brush size, look at that, you can actually create a grid of dots. Now you can do this with cell pattern and you can do this with ball action, CC ball action. But what I've noticed with this particular effect is you can change the stroke length. So rather than just having balls or dots, you can actually change their shape. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And you can change the rotation. Now I was able to make that grid, and this is something I didn't mention in the other two examples, by setting the stroke randomness to zero. As soon as I increase the randomness, we get that kind of look, which isn't too bad, but I do like the uniform look. So changing the randomness to zero gives us that grid. Pretty good. Let's just turn off the layer below. Look at that, isn't that cool? And of course you could animate this. So, I wonder if you actually realized that um, Brushstrokes was capable of doing this. Up until about half an hour ago, I certainly didn't because I didn't really pay Brushstrokes much attention. And it reminded me again to do a bit more experimenting because 10-15 minutes of playing around with one effect and just digging in and exploring can really pay dividends. I know that when I go back to work next week, I'll just have another little trick up my sleeve when I need it. Okay, so have a play yourself. Be sure to put a link to the things that you've created with brush strokes and leave a message in the comments. But for now, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in the next tip.